They often say she's an ageless wonder. Her lustful life makes this lady tick. When a young man looks at Madame, she just throws herself right at him. She's young at heart and still gets her kick. And that man plays, she's a prime time queen. She throws her selling beanies with propellers. I'm Dr. Joyce Brothers. I'm here to see Madam. <laughs> Tell me the very first man you remember who was wrong for you. Come on, Billy Joe. The barn's empty. I see what you're doing. <gasps> oh, bull twinkies. It's my little sister, Marmalina. Uh, I brought you a flower. Oh, well, thank you, Bertram. It's mighty pretty. Oh, it had a little vermin in it. Hey, you be. Looks like she's her old self again. Where's the... Joy, dear, but keep feeding her those breadcrumbs. We don't want her flying south for the winter. Pinkerton, Pinkerton, where is Dr. Brothers, madam? He's getting worse by the minute. She's on an emergency call. Some real estate brokers are out on a window ledge and she's talking them down. Just give me some sign. <laughs> Dr. Joyce Brothers. Oh, Dr. Brothers, Dr. Brothers, you were supposed to help her. Oh, the deep-seated roots of Madame's trauma have yet to surface from her subconscious. In other words, I think she's quacking up. Brothers, <laughs> please. Sorry, forgive me. I had a morning session today with Soupy Sales. <laughs> You are not a duck. You are a woman and a great star. Oh, I think you said the magic words. Dr. Brothers. Oh, my stars and garters. You've got to help. I'm more confused than a sex star stallion on a merry-go-round. What I planned for today, madam, is some role-playing. Mr. Pinkerton, will you get the material? Mm. I think it will help us with the problem we discussed in our last session. Your attraction to the wrong man. Mm. You mean this role-playing could actually stop Auntie Madam from making mistakes with men? Oh, I hope so. I am so tired of driving past divorce court and seeing that parking space with Madam's name painted on it. I hope this will be all right. It's all I could find since I spoke to you this afternoon. Oh, my goodness. Look at all those hats. Oh, well, a, a lot of overnight guests have had to leave in a hurry. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Madam? Oh, well, I would like you to play the type of man you've always been attracted to. Oh. A sleazeball. Ah. Uh. <laughs> I would like you to play Aunt Madam. Oh, goody. <laughs> Hi, Estella. How's your thingy? <laughs> Forget it, honey. I'm no good for you. I got a gal in every port taking me to court and for long support. Well, I'm a good sport. Listen, no, you don't want me. I drink, I gamble, and I got a tattoo of Phyllis Stiller on my back. Really? For or after her face? <laughs> What's the diff, Skiff? Don't you understand? I'll break your heart, just like your father. <gasps> my father? <gasps> what made me say that? 
Is it possible your father rejected you? Well, I wouldn't say he rejected me, but the day I was born, he went out for a pack of camels. Two years later, we got a postcard from him from Cairo. <laughs> you never forgave your father for deserting you, and now you're forever searching for his love. So that's why I'm attracted to men who end up breaking my heart. That's it. I'm cured. <laughs> well, at least recognizing the problem is the first step toward finding a solution. Well, from now on, I'll only get involved with men who really care about me. Yay! Auntie Madam's through with sleazeballs! Uh, <laughs> Madam, that's the wisest thing you've ever said in the 25 years I've known you. All right, everybody, it's showtime. Oh, yes, I almost forgot. <laughs> you go on ahead, I'll be with you in a minute. We have lots of interesting guests on my show. The kind of people who are so interesting, other shows never ask them on. Yes, a little bizarre poo. <laughs> well, my next guest is someone who fits into that category. His name is Dale Gagné, and he is a piano sexual. But don't tell his mother. Uh, madam, I, I really can't... I'm, I changed my mind. I... I... I really can't, I, I don't want to... <laughs> I love a piano. <laughs> I love a piano. I can talk about it now. It wasn't always easy. I was 14 before I realized I was different. I was home alone one night watching TV and I noticed the family spin it across the room. her lid and bared her keys. She was beautiful. I started with a little foreplay. Then a little three foreplay. I tickled her ivories, held her from on a pumped her pedal. What a trip. Pounding. Crashing. It was over and I felt ugly. Shame. Disgusted. Played out. <laughs> I knew my bizarre craving would lead me back to her bench for another quick piece. <laughs> this spinet had a name. banging on her key. I traded Louise in for a play by Killer Hammond organ. I missed Louise a lot. But I got over it. You would think after that awful experience, I would have realized it was never going to work out for me. But no, I was just beginning. <laughs> I went from piano bar to piano bar. Looking for love in all the wrong places. Miss Honky Tonk. She was the player piano who was tired of playing with herself. <laughs> then I met Baby Grand. She had a nice set of hammers, but I was nearly arrested for playing on it. <laughs> One night I staggered into a seedy dive on Skid Row. I noticed a beat up piano in the corner of the room with one of her legs missing. Yes, it was Louise. She's become a painted saloon piano. I fixed her up, got her a wooden leg, and I realized Louise ended up in the gutter. It had nothing to do with me. It was time to fight back. Center backs 
me 100%. So do the Catholics. Very happy to report that uh, along the way I found personal happiness. I'd like you all to meet my lover, Rosemary. She's from Cleveland. <laughs> About a year ago, Rosemary and I were blessed. Meet Rosemary's baby. Oh, go on and laugh. Wait, you want to hear something pathetic? I was walking the baby just before the show, giving her a little fresh air, right? And, and this cab goes by, and, and a guy throws a tomato and just misses the baby, hits me, yells, Piano lover! <laughs> I chalked it up as a classic example of pianist envy. <laughs> I'm aware there are more than one or two pianosexuals out there. I don't want to know who you are. I don't want to embarrass anybody. Just like you to know that I've been through it and I can help you. <laughs> Promise me that every time you hear this song, that you'll think of me and, and this wonderful time we've here, we've had here. At, see, I'm all shook up. This wonderful time here at Madam's place. Uh, and be proud. I've seen and done it all, and I might add, in a fine way. So much more than this I love to start <laughs> Well, tonight, ladies and gentlemen, I am very excited to have as my special guest one of the most famous psychologists in the world. She's opened more minds than King Solomon. Yeah, she's done more shrinking than a bad Chinese laundry. <laughs> so won't you welcome with me, please, Dr. Joyce Brothers. Yay, Dr. Joyce Brothers. Oh, welcome to the show. Oh, Dr. Joyce Oh, well, let's get right down to brass tacks. Fine. Uh, I just want to know, I, I would like to know about your secret and getting so many men onto your couch. Well, madam, they get on my couch because I like to help them out of their inhibitions. Oh, funny. They stay off my couch because I like to help them out of their marriages. <laughs> I always say, if you can't make a home, break one. <laughs> and speaking of a naked truth, let's take some phone calls from our audience, okay? Yes, if you'd like some advice, please call the number that's on your screen now. You're on the air. This is Dr. Joyce Brothers. Hello. Hello, Dr. Brothers. Uh, am I on? Am I on the air? Yes, you're on the air. What would you like to talk to me about, sir? Oh, Dr. Brothers, I, I have this problem. I... I oh, go on. Go I, on. I, I, I love my dog. Well, many people feel strongly about their pets, sir. No, 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 you don't understand. I love my dog, and, and I don't think she feels the same way about me. <laughs> According to a recent study, sir, it was found that mixed marriages, especially out of species, have a very high rate of failure. If I were you, I'd stick to petting. Thank you. Nice to hear from you, Lauren. Hello, Weirdo Central. You're on the air with Dr. Joyce Brothers. Dr. Brothers? Yes? Have you ever trusted anyone with a multiple personality? Yes, of course. What's your name? Avalyn. Sybil. Uh, Bob. <laughs> What's on your mind? Our vacation's coming up. Sybil wants to go to Paris. Evelyn wants to go to New York. <laughs> and I want to stay home alone. I'm sick and tired of these two bras. <laughs> we don't take group calls. <laughs> we'll 
be back in a moment after this message from our new sponsor, Cockatiel on a Stick, America's first bird-flavored popsicle. I have to go to my dressing room for a minute and powder my nose. Oh, here, I think I've got a dime for you. <laughs> I'm a little short-changed. <laughs> I mean, really powder my nose. Okay, excuse me. Uh, Dr. Brothers. Yes. I have a problem for you. How do you tell someone you love her after 25 years, especially if you're her butler and she's a great star? I suggest telling her. Oh, thank you. I'll send you a bill. <laughs> well, I see by the old clock on the table, like the sands through an hourglass, so are the loves of my life. Better turn that over, honey. I need another session. <laughs> Dr. Joyce, what should I do? Pinky still has the hots for me after 25 years. Well, according to a recent study on passionate butlers... Oh, forget your studies, Joyce. I'm talking about Pinky and I. Pinky and me. You too? <laughs> well, here a day. Pinky gets around, doesn't he? <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> well, madam, what was your relationship like with him 25 years ago? Oh, my, my, my. Well, we were in love, and it was passionate while it lasted. How do you feel about him now? I don't know. I'm not so sure. Sometimes I think of him as my butler. Other times I think he's just got a cute little butt. <laughs> <laughs> well, it sounds to me like you're not over your relationship. If I were you, I'd try to rekindle it. Otherwise, you and Pinkerton will never know what might have been. Well, I guess you're right. If Liz and Dick could try it and try it... And Try it. So can Pinky and I. I hope you can do better than they did. Oh, so do I. She's got rice burns, you know. I've never seen Angie Adams so nervous before. She's tried on five different perfumes. She's beginning to smell like a French swan. Well, it's all because she's going to have dinner with Pinkerton tonight, and he's not going to be the butler. <laughs> oh. oh, hi. Hey, you girls aren't going to leave me alone, are you? Oh, oh we're just going to the evenings. We'll be back in a couple of hours. Mm -hmm. Well, is, is it really necessary for you to leave? Uh, well, Pinkerton, when a person wants to go to the movies, uh, it's usually good that they leave the house first. <laughs> Bernadette, I know you. You two are taking off just to leave Madam and me alone here tonight. Oh, no, Pinky. We really want to see this movie. Oh, yes. really? <laughs> All right, what's it called? Uh, Godzilla meets San Exunicello. <laughs> Bye. 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 <laughs> Uh, good evening. Oh. oh, I'm sorry I startled you, Pinky. Me startled? No, not at all. Wow. May I escort you to the table? Thank you, Pinky. You like chicken? Yeah. Grab a wing. Oh, you see the key is so clear. Oh, you look lovely tonight. Oh, well, thank you very much, Pinky. I is is that a dress. new gown? Yes, I had it made for the occasion. Oh, lovely. There we are. Thank you. <laughs> oh. Everything was going so well. <clears throat> well. Some champagne? Oh, yes. A little champagne. <laughs> Ooh, a little the bubble in. Toast. To 25 wonderful years. Here's to it, kiddo. <laughs> they have been fun, haven't they, Pinky? Will you ever forget that carriage ride through Central Park in New York City? Ah, uh, how can I forget? We stopped the driver, made him get out, and walk with us around the lake. That's right. When we got back, the horse was up on blocks. His shoes had been stolen. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Pinky, I remember something else from years ago. I remember. Uh, that parachute drop over Lucille Ball's house. Oh, no, 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 no. The vow we made 25 years ago. To never be without each other. And... Never to parachute drop over Lucille Ball's house. <laughs> oh, was Desi Arnaz angry? She kept saying, I don't want you ever to drop over Lucy's house again. <laughs> Papa Lou. <laughs> well, so far we've lived up to our vows. I remember those funny games we used to play. 
You remember when I used to sneak off and then wait for you to find me in the hot tub? Oh, yeah. My favorite game, hide and go shrink. <laughs> we spend hours looking in each other's eyes. Yes, we do. Oh, Pinky, can I be honest with you? Well, you were the first time we met when you said, meet me in the bar, I gotta ditch my husband. <laughs> well, I'm being honest now when I say I'm not picking anything up anymore. Neither am I. Let's face it. We're just a couple of cuckoos trying to turn back the clock. But it can't be done. I'm... Can it? No. I'm afraid not. But it was fun trying. Mm. Can I make a toast that perhaps we could spend the next 25 years together? You got it, kiddo. <laughs> when you're 75, I'll get you your own butler. <laughs> Madam. Yes. Will you be dining alone tonight? No, Pinky. I'll be dining with a very close friend. Let's eat. Okay. <laughs> the heat. Well, at least Madam is well. Thanks to Dr. Brothers, Madam swears she's only going to date men who are winners from now on. Oh, good. <laughs> By the way, where is Auntie Madam? Oh, she's on a road trip with the Raiders. How's <laughs> Pinky doing? Oh, very well. He realized that he and Madam cannot recapture the past, and I think he's adjusting to it very well. Quack, 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 quack,